Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse, Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany, and let's once and for all get these damn hashtag questions answered. I know there is so much information on there out there about what should I do for hashtags? Should they be in the comments? Should it be in the caption? How many should I use? Which one should I use? And on and on and on. So I am going to answer them. And what has worked really well for me, keep in mind, I started my Instagram account at Project Me with Tiffany starting at zero about a year and a half ago to whatever I am now. What am I now? I'm like almost at 23,000. And this is all organically. I didn't pay for ads to drive people here. I didn't go buy followers. There's no bots or anything like that. And my audience is proven to convert. So I make between eight and ten thousand dollars a week off from my Instagram account at that size. And even when my size was smaller, I still made significant cash. Maybe not every week look like that, but for sure I had ten thousand dollar months even when I was at, you know, 3000 or 2500 followers, because what matters is, is the quality of the people, not the quantity, our ego loves to see the quantity me too, right? It's like, Oh my God, I'm going to celebrate. I reach. I remember when we hit 22,000, I was so excited because 22 is my, um, is my special lucky manifestation number. So I remember even where I was um, sitting, I was actually in, um, Chicago, my hometown where I grew up. And I was there for a sad reason for my stepfather's funeral. And I was coming out of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Love Dunkin' Donuts. You should sponsor me. Um, and I was looking at Instagram as we do when we walk and almost get hit by a car. And I saw it hit 22,000. I was like, wow that's really freaking cool. Like that number was really significant to me. So I do feel I need to say that to you guys that you can still make even at a thousand followers, even at 800. It it depends on truly what niche you're in as well. But I know people that are horrible on Instagram and they're still making money because of what their niche is and who they're targeting and people need their services so badly. So don't tell yourself that lie. But let me answer these hashtag questions that are so common. If you line up a whole bunch of influencers, social media experts, I guarantee each one would have a different answer to these questions. So again, I'm answering what's true to me. And also, I know my social media manager who runs an agency, she would agree with all these things as well. And some of them are what she taught me. So you guys are also getting the knowledge benefit of the high end people I hire, I share that knowledge and value with with you guys on the podcast as well. And you're not even having to pay for them. 
So what's up with that? Okay. There are 30 hashtags allowed for your feed posts. Most of you probably know that. Yes, you should use all 30, period, end of story. As far as if the hashtag should be in your actual caption or in comments, it doesn't matter. You can do either or. The reason a lot of people put them in comments is it just makes um, your, your post look cleaner, right? And if you really dig on my Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany, you will see sometimes it's in comments, sometimes it's not. And that's because we're always experimenting and testing things because none of us know the actual Instagram algorithm. If we did, I mean, we'd be like, we would be owning an island in Fiji or something like that. I mean, that would be great. It's I look at it like a game. So we're playing like a really rapid paced chess game when it comes to any of these social media platforms and trying to um, understand the algorithm, benefit off it, you know, beat the algorithm. So that's a really just good add on here is to have that mindset instead of getting so frustrated. Look at it like a game like, oh, what move should I try next? Maybe should I should try this approach? Maybe I should try that approach. I'm going to give you a head start today, though. So you already know you can put it in comments. You can put in the caption. Now, if you want to put it in comments, you have got to put it in that first comment immediately after you do that post. I mean, not like five minutes later, immediately. So you'll already want to have your 30 hashtags copied, whether it's from your notes app or wherever you're doing it. You want to have those copied so that right when you, you know, press post on your Instagram post, you can open up comments, press paste, and then you're done and all your hashtags are in there. So you do have to do it that way. If you are someone who plans content like me, um, and I'm not sponsored by them at all, although they should, <laughs> um, Planoly is the platform that I recommend um, for planning out your Instagram grid. And Plan Planoly now allows you to put your hashtags in the first comment and it will automatically do that for you. Fun fact. Now, I'm not sure if the free version of Planoly um, allows that, but Planoly is not expensive. I think it's $9 a month. I'm just not sure if the free version has that feature. Probably not because we know how all that goes. Um, just wanted to let you know what I use. All right. So as far as what hashtags to use, if you have a small account, you have 300 people, you have 1,000 people, you have you know, 3,700 people, you even have, you know, 15,000 people, you need to be using hashtags that are relative in size to your audience. So for example, well, we can use mine as an example, 23,000 followers. I mean, obviously, if you guys are listening to this far in the future, um, you know, I'm going to have God knows how many by then, but I'm just going to use this 23,000 as an example. Even with having 23,000, which is a very respectable number of followers, right? I would not use hashtags like hashtag millionaire, hashtag business, um, hashtag boss babe. I would get lost. There is no, there is very little chance that my post is going to be seen with my size account when there's major influencers that have significantly more followers than me who are using those hashtags. So hashtags that, um, that are niche specific to what I do as a top business coach is maybe hashtag business tips, hashtag business tips for women, um, hashtag women in business. That might, one might, might even buy that might even be too big. So you have to look to see in relative size. Don't be afraid to use hashtags that have 13,000. Don't be afraid to use hashtags that have 100,000. You can even do ones that have, you know, 500,000, but you want to have a mix of them. So don't use all just micro micro hashtags. Um, you want to have some that are like small, like I said, 13,000, 7,000, 
that's fine. But then also make sure you go into like the 20,000s, 30,000s, 50,000s. And then you can throw some, you can throw a couple big ones in there, but I wouldn't do anything that's like millions and millions unless you have a really large size audience. Now, here's the big thing that most people do wrong with hashtags. They pick hashtags maybe based on their content and maybe even a step further based on their specific niche. But what they're not doing, and I'm guessing a lot of you aren't doing this, is selecting hashtags that your ideal client would actually use. So just because it's your niche and you know your niche, let's say you are um, you're a wellness professional and you help people, you know, get their diet in order, get their overall health and wellness in order. OK, and you're using hashtags that are specific to your niche. So you're like, you know, wellness professional, wellness coach, health coach, you know, you're using all of those. But would your ideal client be using those. Typically, your ideal client is gravitating to content that makes them feel validated, that makes them feel less alone with their problem or current issue, um, that makes them laugh, and that, and also um, where they're seeking something, right? Like if I'm in a new city and I'm looking for a makeup artist, right? I'll put in Las Vegas makeup artist or Las Vegas makeup or something like that. Okay, so you need to make sure you are using hashtags that your ideal client would use, meaning they would type in that search word into Instagram. A, a different way to look at it that might kind of help your brain is what kinds of things is your ideal client Googling? What are they Googling? Are they Googling um, how to get more energy? I'm, are they Googling symptoms like fatigue, depression, um, exhaustion? Are they um, Googling things like tips for new moms? Um, are they Googling how to start an online business? What are the things they're Googling? And pick out those like key words and short phrases, obviously, because we're doing hashtags here and short phrases. And then go into Instagram and type those in and make sure you check the size of those hashtags, you know, that they make sense. Um, and Instagram, when you type in a hashtag under that search page, you type it in. I mean, I'll do it right now while we're live on here, because why not? That's the whole point of this show. So let's let's do um, I'm trying to think of a good one for you guys. How about for those of you who are like fitness people? Um, I will put in um, exhaust exhausted. A I can't spell right now. H -E okay, I'm not a great speller, by the way. Okay, so interestingly enough, um, exhausted by itself has 3.7 million posts. But then you want to look at the other suggestions they provide you. I mean, you want to use the suggestion Instagram provides you. Um, hello, this is part of playing the game. They're giving you the suggestion. So, okay, 3.7 million for exhausted. That's pretty big depending on your size account. Exhausted mommy, 56.8 thousand. Cha-ching, use that. Exhausted but happy, 56.2 thousand. Cha-ching, exhausted mama 21.3 thousand okay so it already gave some great freaking examples that you can use to go after your ideal client and i'm sure there's ones there's one that i wouldn't have thought of right like exhausted but happy i wouldn't have thought i wouldn't have thought of that and therefore it gives you suggestions so do you guys see what I'm saying? I want you to write a list. Um, you can put it in your notes app on your phone. You can write it down on paper, whatever you prefer. But I want you to start doing brain dumps of words or phrases your ideal client would be typing into Google or 
they would be typing in those words or short phrases into the Instagram search looking for posts. So when I was absolutely crippled, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but I was like fully couch bound for a solid three, four months with adrenal fatigue. Actually, I had um, adrenal insufficiency. So my body stopped producing cortisol. I actually had to take cortisol. Without cortisol, you die. Um, and I truly burnt out my adrenal system from being an exercise addict and a life filled with stress and chaos. And I gained like something insane, like 35 pounds in three months, not pleasant. So here I am couch bound, miserable. I've bouncing from doctors, doctor to doctor. No one's really helping me and giving me a lasting solution. I felt really alone. So what did I do? I mean, of course, I went to like Google, right? Because all of us who have medical shit, we go to Google. And then we find out we're like on death's door. It's like, I have a headache and bloating. And then all of a sudden you have like intestinal cancer. It's like, what the hell? Um, so I went to Instagram and I typed in what I thought I had. I typed in adrenal fatigue. Well, guess what? Then I ended up finding other people who have it, who are who either healed from it or are healing. I made beautiful connections. I even have a friend to this day. I have two friends to this day because of that made me feel less alone. And I hired my adrenal fatigue specific health coach this way because I found her through the hashtags. So put yourself in your ideal client's shoes and you might have, might you know, you might have not been in that deep pain or frenzied spot for many years, um, but put yourself back into that time zone, being miserable on the couch, being stressed out, it being two in the morning and you can't sleep, it being tax time and you don't have the money, it's bill time you don't have the money, you're at work and you you know you hated it. Whatever your niche is, it could if you're in the beauty side of things. A lot of people go, well, how do you, what's a pain point if you have, you know, you're selling shirts and products and jewelry or eyelashes and lotions? It's still an emotional buy. People want to feel something, right? So they want to feel more confident. They have an insecurity. They want to feel younger. Um, they want to get rid of their acne. So go and drop in to when you were in that state or someone that was close to you. What are the types of things you would Google? What are the types of pieces of content that would make you feel validated, less alone and connected on Instagram? And then go after those hashtags and check. Another great tip that many people don't know, in your Instagram stories, you are allowed to use 11 hashtags. Therefore, you should use all 11. And it's like, well, Tiffany, I don't want to do that. Then my stories are going to look crazy. No, because with your fingers, you can shrink down that hashtag grouping to where it turns into a pinpoint and you can't see it. So you want to use all 11. Now, when you go into the GIF section, you know, where you use all like the location tag and all the other stuff like the poll sticker, you want to make sure you're using that hashtag sticker that's in there. And I'm sure a lot of you have been using that one, but you didn't know you still get 10 more. Even you want to make sure one of your hashtags is using that hashtag sticker. The reason is Instagram created and has kept in that hashtag sticker for some reason. We don't know what it is, but why? otherwise they would get rid of it if all you had to do was type in your hashtags. Therefore, I make sure I use that for every single post. I'm not joking. And have the other 10 hashtags, hashtags posted in there. Of course, they can't be the same every time. You need to make sure that your hashtag groupings, whether it's stories or in your feed, you have to make sure it's relevant to what you're talking about and relevant to your ideal cu customer. If I'm talking and giving like, you know, mindset tips, that kind of thing, I'm not going to go and put in things that have nothing to do with mindset. Like I'm not going to put in bulldog mom, um, 
I'm trying to think what else, like boss and heels. I'm going to put in money mindset, growth mindset, inner work, um, you know, success mindset, things like that, that that go along with the post. You need you want to make sure of that, because if you don't, you run the risk of Instagram shadow banning you and being like, you know, they're just using the same hashtags and it's not relevant to the search. And that messes up their their bots and their platform, right? Because it's a search engine. Instagram is a mini search engine. So they wouldn't like it if someone is going and typing in money mindset and then in pops in the in your search page, up pops, you know, um, something where it's a bunch of dogs or it is someone showing off a new necklace in their line or, you know, a new uh, skin regimen because that's they need to make sure the content that pops up in that search feed matches what people are searching for. No freaking different than Google. Okay, it's just that Instagram isn't as big of an animal as it is to to uh, tackle the whole Google thing. So I hope you guys found these tips with hashtags helpful. I have a special thing that I created for you guys. And I'm giving 90 done for you graphics for you guys to use in social media. So we have them sized for Instagram stories for your Instagram feed, you can use them in Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the things and they're done for you. It's about a month's worth. And they're all pre sized for you. Because I know how much time and effort it takes to do content, especially when you're wanting to like do graphics and things like that. So these are all done for you. All you have to do is go to projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash free graphics. So it's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash free graphics. If you are driving, you are not able to remember things like me, (laughs) you can always DM me at Project Me with Tiffany, and I will go ahead and send you the direct link. So you get them immediately, and these are for you to download and save and use. And there's some of my quotes are in there too, but they're these were all created professionally. So it's not like, you know, I like had wine and went on word swag and made some like janky ass quotes for you guys. Like I paid someone money to make these to make sure they're pretty, they're on brand, not meaning not saying they're all purple, I mean, on brand for my listeners, for my audience, so that most of it is designed to target females, because most of my audience is females who are looking for more female clients and customers. So that's my free gift for you. And also, you guys don't forget that if you leave me a five star written iTunes review, I'm going to buy you a coffee drink of your choice, or of course, celery juice. I know not all of you drink coffee, although you should. But I mean, celery juice, if you're constipated, big, big fan, big fan, except I think it's crazy that it's like celery juice is like $7 here. And like you can get celery for like, I don't know, you can get a whole bundle of it for like a dollar. Yet, who is really going to sit there and grind that juice away? Not me, but I know some of you do. I don't I don't have it in me. So all you have to do is go leave on iTunes. You don't have to have an um, you don't have to have an iPhone or an Apple in order to leave a five star written review on iTunes. So you go in there, you leave a review, make sure you include like your full name or your social media handle on Instagram or Facebook. And then DM me at Project Me with Tiffany on Instagram. And I w- it'd be better if you took a screenshot of the review. Um, But let me know you left a review. And then please allow me to show my gratitude in buying you a coffee drink or a celery juice. I really appreciate all of you avid listeners, all the support, all of the love, all the conversations that happen in the DMs from the different episodes. It truly makes my day and it makes putting out all this free content and all that goes into it and all the money and time and energy I pour into it. It makes it all worth it to me knowing that 
you really vibe the show and it really does make a difference in your life. So I just wanted to say that to you guys. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love ya. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.